usually before these uh, talks we do a little chant. Uh, maybe we can do it as we usually do with the chant. Kono bade hanashi sulemai ni ga yutsu no kai kyouge tuyu mijikai o kyo tonairu no de kyo mo sodo tonaite kara hajimitai to moimasu. Mujo この<笑><笑> I didn't actually plan to give uh, such a talk during this uh, Tenzo retreat, but uh, according to Yushin san, some people thought it would be a good idea. So um, I would like to say a little bit about the Tenzo, uh, the Zen cook. That's how you would write Tenzo with Chinese characters. Kono Tenzo ni tsuite dogen zenji ga Tenzo kyokun to you, ma shomotsu o imakala hapyaku nen mai kaiti imaskirado mo. おそらく他の仏教の宗派でこの天蔵要するに料理をする人について特に言われてないしこれが大事な修行だとは考えられてないんですけどの天蔵は禅寺においてはまあとりわけ重要なポストだと思われてますしこの天蔵の修行はま、本来なら1日20時間修行ですけれども、その中で道元禅師が特に、ま、料理をするということに、え、着目して天蔵教訓の、え、書いているわけです。So uh, this is how you write Enzo in Chinese characters. Um, as far as I know, other Buddhist schools have no special teachings regarding the cook. It's uh, as far as I know, it's only in Soto Zen that uh, Dogen Zenji wrote the Tenzo Kyokun, the instructions for the cook, which focus on the practice of cooking. Um, in Zen, of course, 
seated meditation zazen is at the core of our practice but the whole 24 hours of the day are considered to be practice but Ogun Zenji in the Tenzo Kyokun focuses especially on the aspect of cooking. This Karawatashitachi Moko no Antaiji de wa ma nine ni ippen gurai no wariai de kono Tenzo Kyokun o fuyu no ano benkyo no kikai de読んでるんです。春から秋までも、ま、いつかごとに消防現像水門機を勉強してるんですけれども、冬は3ヶ月間雪に埋もれて、外で作業する機会がないので毎日勉強会開いてます。天造教訓はだいたい2年に1遍
出てこない。弁、う、当、ん、はだったと思いますが、えー、そこにある一つの考案が出てきます。ある禅寺にある雲水が3年ほどもう修行してそこのお寺の住職に一度も質問したことがなかったそこで住職がある日にその雲水を呼んできてお前はもう3年間ここで修行しているけれどもなぜ今まで一度も私に質問したことはないのかと聞くんですね。それに対して雲水は、えーまあ、今までは黙ったけれども、実は前お世話になったお寺で悟りを抱いてますと。なので、これ以上質問することはない。それに対して住職は、えー、まあそれは良かった。えー、ところで、お前はどういう、まあ、きっかけで、えー、どういう教えを聞いて悟ったのかと、うん、聞くと、雲水は、私は以前、えー、お世話になった、えー、師匠に、うん、本当の私は何なのかを聞いたら、えー、その師匠は、火の神様が火を求めていると答えた。現代日本語で言えば、まあ、そういう答え方、えー。火の神様が火を求めている。えー、それで、まあ、深く悟ることができたと。でそれを住職が聞いて、なるほど。これは素晴らしいお言葉だけれども、どうやら君はまだその意味が分かってないんだと。雲水は怒って、部屋を利用すとするけれども、途中で、まあ、考え直して、部屋を出る前に振り返って、じゃあ本当の私は何なんだと、その住職に聞くんですね。住職はそれに対して、それだ。火の神様が火を求めているんだと。でそこでようやく悟,った悟ることができたと、えー、言われている。でこの、まあ、火の神様が火を求めている、うん。これをどうやって解釈するか。この火というのは、まあ、悟りのことですね。火の神様はもう火でできているようなものですから。悟りが悟,悟りを求めているような、えー、本来の自己を求めたって、ここにあるわけですから、本当の私はどこだろうかと考えたときに、そう考えたのはすでに本当の私ですから、えー、本来の私ってどこだろうと、いくら探したって見つかるはずはない。悟りってどこだろうと。思っていくら探したって見つかるはずはない。だって悟りを求め,る求めている自分はもうすでに悟っているわけです。ところが、この雲水の最初の受け止め方が間違ってたと、まあ、住職は指摘する。どうしてかというと、雲水は私が火の神様で悟りが火であれば、もう悟りを求める必要はないんだと。だってもう悟っているんだと。そう言われたじゃないかと。本来の私がここにあるわけだから、本来の私はどこだろうと探す必要は何もないんだと。そう受け止めて3年間、次にお世話になった師匠に一度も質問しなかったけれども、その受け止め方は間違っていると指摘されて、最初は怒って出ようとするけれども振り返ってじゃあ師匠あなたならどう答えますかと言った時にそれだと言われた要するに火の神様だからこそ火を求め続けなければいけない
本来の私がここにいるわけだからこそ本来の私を求め続ける。悟っているからこそ悟りを求め続けるという。それでいいんだと。悟りを求めちゃいけないということではない。悟りを求めているというのは悟っている証拠。別にどこかに悟りというものが隠れているわけではない。それを求めているという行為の中に悟りが現れているというまあ意味の言葉なので、実はこの悟りの心と悟りを求める心はつながっているということです。And the text Tenzo Kyokun, Instructions for the Cook,、uh, starts with the statement that first of all, the Tenzo needs Bodhi mind. I already said that.、Um, Bodhi is an Indian word which means awakening. So, Bodhi mind literally would be awakened mind. But、um, Bodhi is translated into Chinese with this character, which in Chinese would be Tao,、uh, which means the truth, but also it means the way. And sometimes Bodhi mind, therefore, is、uh, translated as the way seeking mind,、um, or the mind of the way, but often seeking is added. So it's the mind seeking for the way, or it's the mind seeking for awakening. So, if you think about it, these are two completely different translations. One says Bodhi mind is already awakened mind. The other translation claims that a Bodhi mind isn't yet awakened, but it's seeking for awakening.、Uh, which of these two translations is correct?、Mm, I would say that both are correct. In the Bendova, which is another important text by Dogen Zenji, where he talks about Zazen,、uh, there's a koan、uh, which deals with a monk and the abbot of a monastery where the monk had lived for three years without ever asking the abbot a question. And one day the abbot calls the monk for an interview and says, Well, you've been practicing here for three years. You never asked a question. Why is that? <coughs> and the monk says, Well, I didn't tell you until now, but actually, the monastery where I stayed before, I had an enlightenment experience. And now all my questions are solved.、Uh, I have no more questions to ask. And the abbot says, Oh, that's good for you. Good to hear. Um, please tell me how that enlightenment, enlightenment experience occurred. And the monk said,、uh, I was asking my former teacher,、um, what's the true self? And at that time, my former teacher answered, that's just like the god of fire looking for fire. And when I heard these words, all my doubts were solved. And the abbot of the present monastery then says, Well, that's a fine saying, but I doubt that you really understood it. it. Seems that you didn't really get the meaning of the words. And the monk is upset by that and is trying to leave the room, but when he's just reached the door, he's thinking about it once more and he turns back to the abbot and asks him, Well, What then is my true self? And the abbot says, There, that's it.、Uh, the god of fire looking for fire. <laughs> um, and here the fire is standing for enlightenment or for the true self or whatever.、Um, the monk, when he first heard these words、uh, three or four years ago, he probably took them at. According to my teacher, I'm already enlightened. I'm already my true self. So there's really no meaning in looking for my true self.、Uh, it doesn't make any sense to look for myself. It doesn't look, make any sense to look for enlightenment when I'm already enlightened. So he stopped asking questions.、Uh, he stopped seeking for anything.、Um, and the abbot of the new monastery says, The words are fine, but your understanding is wrong. 
the point he's making is only because you're enlightened, you're looking for enlightenment. Uh, of course, you are already your true self. But that doesn't mean that you should stop looking for your true self. Only when you're looking for your true self, your true self manifests in that looking. Satori or enlightenment manifests in seeking enlightenment. So it's not that when you seek enlightenment after three years or five years or eventually you will find it somewhere. But also it doesn't mean that because you're already enlightened, you don't have to look for anything. When you look for enlightenment, when you seek for it, that's already a manifestation of enlightenment. And nobody, nowhere else. That's where it manifests. Um, that also relates to the first part of the Gyoji chapter of the Sogo Genzo, which I talked about uh, five days ago. But I talked about that section only in Japanese. Um, in the beginning of the Gyoji chapter, Dogen Zenji says that, well, he uses the expression Do Kan. Um, do is again the way, and Kan means a ring. So he's talking about the ring of the way. And he uses uh, four words Hoshin, Shugyo, Bodai, Nehan. Hoshin means to arouse. Body mind. Uh, shugyo means to practice. Uh, bodai again then is body itself. Hoshin is basically the first step towards body, and bodai is when you reach it. And nehan is nirvana. So there's four steps in practice. First is hoshin, the first aspiration towards the way. Then there's practice. Then there's Bodhi, the attainment of Bodhi, and then there's Nirvana. And normally you'd think that's the end of the story. At the beginning you're looking for Nirvana, you take several steps and finally you find Nirvana. But Dogen Sinji says that's not the case. There's a ring. These are a ring. So after Nehan, after Nirvana, comes again Hoshin, arousing Bodhi mind. First you arouse Bodhi mind, then you practice, then you finally find Bodhi, you attain Nirvana, and the next step is you arouse Bodhi mind. Practice, get the Bodhi Nirvana. It's a circle. These are connected and one. So without Nirvana, if you wouldn't be in Nirvana already, you wouldn't be arousing Bodhi mind. If you wouldn't be Buddhas already, you wouldn't be here. Because, I mean, who would sit for two hours in the morning staring at the wall if he wouldn't be a Buddha already? Who would do that? Uh, to you, Doka, Do no, ma, Watta, Ego, the Eva Ring, Galunus, the Mo, Hoshin, or Ste, Sugyo, or Ste, Yagate, Bodai, or Ete, Nehan, Ni Hailu, Tokoro, Ga, Nehan, no Tsugini, Mata, Atatana, Hoshin, Gal, Nehan, no, Ato, or Shigate, Bodai, to Nehan, no, Ato, or Shigate, Somo, Somo, Hoshin, to Sugyo, Ga, the Kidu. So you, Imi, Deva, どう心は悟りの心でもある悟りを求める心でもあるその悟りを実践しようとする心でもあるそれがまず大事であると道元禅師が言われるです道元禅師の書物の中に明らかに出てきます特例結構まあ意味合いが違ったりするんですね割と若い頃に書かれた学童用人種では菩提心とは無常を感じる心と書いてあります無常というのはつまり全てのものが移り変わっていくという
感じる。見る。無情をはっきりと見ることなんかかけてますよね。まあ、見る、見るのつもりで書いてます。感じる。え、母大師とはすべての物が無情であると。はっきり見る。で、それは自分の周りではなくこの普通私と思っている。え、まあ私は今年53年から今日まで生きてた。このものも実は無常である。いつ死んでもおかしくない。いつ死んでもおかしくないどころか、実は今日もすでに死んでいる。昨日の私はもうどこにもいない。昨日の私とは違う。物が強国に来ているけれども明日はそれはもういない発想それがまあ無常を感じるそれが分かったらもうのんびりできないはずと同源全寺が言われるんですね本当にそれが分かったらまあ小学生の夏休みみたいに宿題は明日にしよう明後
疑問が湧いてきます。もう一つは、人を救うためには、まず自分が救われてなくちゃ救えないはずです。この救うというのを悟りという意味で受け取ると自分が悟っていないのにどうしたら人を悟りの表示へ導くことができるんだろうかというどう考えたってあの、まあ、矛盾しているというかおかしいで私が思うに道元禅師がこれを晩年になって強調したのは、例えば、自他一如、私と他、自他一如と、よく言われるけれども、自他一如は、まあ、すぐ誰にでも言える。私と一切主張は一つだと。だから、お腹が空いたときに、自分が食べたら皆さんも満腹になるはずだと。この理屈でいけば。悟りでも、まず自分が悟って、で、自分が悟ったら、もう自分の面内がそこで解決したら、もう全宇宙がそれで悟るはずだと。でもこれ、それはあまりにも自分に都合のいい理屈になってしまうんじゃないですか。確かに、本当は自分の問題が解決してなければ、人の問題を解決することはできない。さらに、自他一のでいけば、そもそもみんなつながっているんだから、お釈迦様が悟ったときに、一切主張も同時に悟ったと言われている。だったら、私も悟れば、一切主張は悟るはず。なぜ人のことを考えなくちゃいけないんだと。でもそれでいけば結局自分のことだけ精一杯になってしまうし自分の問題さえ解決していれば終わりということになってしまうそれじゃ大丈夫仏教じゃないだから道元禅師は晩年あえて字と他を分けてお前は一番最後でいいんだとまず人を救いなさいでも本人はまだ救われてないどうしたら人を救えるんだろう救えないじゃないか。私一人だって今だに救われてないのに、どうして人を救えるんだろうかと。ところで、そこでいっぺん自分を忘れて、ダメ元で何かを人のためにしよう。私だってでまだ救われてないけれども、ダメ元で、じゃあ人を先に救おうという、この心が少し芽生えてくると、あひょっとして今そこで芽生えようとしている、この気持ちこそ悟りだったという気づきがあるんですね。あ、これこそ私がずっと求めてた悟り、救い。悟りたい悟りたい悟りたいと何年も頑張ったけど悟れなかったじゃあ俺の悟りは後でいい人のことをちょっと考えてみようふっと出てきたこの心こそ菩提心であったかもしれないこれこそ私が求めてた救いだったかもしれないとだから道元禅師はどうしたら人を救うのかということに関して同じこの地味とこと先度だという願いを人にも持ってもらうことだと言うんですね。人を救うためにはその人にも地味とこと先度だという願いを持ってもらわないといけないという。これはまあ晩年の道元禅師の、えー、菩提心の定義です。Um, the Tenzo Kyokun starts、uh, with claiming that first of all the Tenzo needs body mind and body mind is both The mind of the way and way seeking mind.、Um, in his different works, Dogen Zenji defines body mind in different ways. For example, in the Gakudo Yojinshu, Dogen Zenji says, body mind is the mind that sees impermanence. And there he's not talking about the impermanence around you, but your own impermanence. Like, I'm 50 now, and 
usually I would think, well, I, the same person who has been living since 1968, well, of course, I changed to a certain degree, but it's more or less the same person. At least during the last 10 years, I didn't change so much. And seeing impermanence means to realize that you could die any day, you could die any time. You're not permanent, and not only that, actually you're dying already right now. You're not the same person that you were yesterday, and I'm not the same person that I will be tomorrow. I'm only this person today, in this moment. When you realize that you can't wait with practice until tomorrow, because who's going to practice tomorrow? You can only practice now. The person that you are right now can practice only today. You can't wait. And usually we're pretty good at um, waiting until tomorrow when it comes to things that we don't like so much. Um, but if you really have this mind, Dogen Zinji says it's like there's a fire burning in your head. If there's a fire burning on your head, you wouldn't say, well, I can wait until tomorrow until I un unput this fire. You have only that moment. And then later in his life, this is a definition of body mind he gave when he was 34. And then later when he is approaching 50, uh, in a chapter that is entitled Hotsubo Daishin uh, in the Shobo Genzo, meaning arousing body mind. He says in Japanese, it's Jimmy Tokudo Sendota, uh, vowing to save yourself, uh, vowing to save others before you save yourself. Uh, you haven't reached the shore of Nirvana yet, but you vow to take others to Nirvana before you. And that's kind of a strange definition of body and mind. First of all, we usually say in Zen that the self and others are not different. So why would you put yourself last and vow to save others before you, if it's one and the same? Uh, sometimes it's said that the moment that Shakyamuni had enlightenment, all living beings in the same instance were enlightened. <laughs> so if any one of us would reach enlightenment, then all the rest of us, in theory, should reach enlightenment. So what is wrong with trying to get enlightened first? If I get enlightened, all of you get enlightened. Why should I uh, wait with my own enlightenment until later and first try to help you with your enlightenment. Uh, that's a little bit strange about this. Another strange thing is how could I possibly help you with your enlightenment if I'm not enlightenment first? How can I help you to get to Nirvana if I don't know where Nirvana is myself? I first need to find it myself before I can teach you the way. The problem with that attitude is as long as you think that you need to find it first, you won't find it. And this theory that, well, once I find it, all other living beings will also be enlightened. Oh, that's nice in theory, but that also is just ego attachment. So in his later life, Dogen Zenji says, forget about yourself, forget about your own enlightenment, help others first. How is that possible? How can I help others if I'm not first enlightened? The funny thing is, if even just for a little bit you manage to forget yourself and think about what you could do for others, when this thought, what could I do for others, starts to Blossom. That is kind of the blossom is almost opening. And then you realize, oh, actually, what I was looking for all these years, the enlightenment, the body mind, whatever, nirvana, and I couldn't find it for all these years. And now I made up my mind to forget about enlightenment and help others first. Actually, this thought, this wish to help others. What is blooming there 
that's actually enlightenment. The enlightenment that I was looking for myself all this time and couldn't find. Actually, the moment you let it go and think about others, there it is, there it is. Also in the, ben, in the Bendua, there's the saying, the moment you open your hands, there it is. Hanate bateni miteli to you, Kotoba mo. Bendua ni detikimasu kero domo, onaji kara kurida to mo desu ne. Ima made tsukamo, tsukamo to motte ta mono o tebanasu to, ah, koko datta no ka tuyo. Dewa, tenzo kyoku no naka de, bodai shin wa dou yu fu ni tegi sarete iru ka. Mazu, wari to saisho no ho de, tenzo wa ban o motte, で、菩提心となすと。言われて。言います。書かれています。番というのは、真字で書くと、この字です。絆。という字ですね。番をもって菩提心となすという言葉が出てきます。今でこそ、日本では絆は大事だ、大事だと言われるんですけれども。仏教では、本来、絆。は束縛を意味するのであまりいいものと、えー、されてないんですねむしろ束縛から自由になるのは仏教の目標であったはずなのに道元禅師は「晩」をもって菩提心となす実はこの「晩」という字には「助け」という字もあ意味もあるんですね「助け」も自分を縛るために使われるんですねえー、よく、ユーシンさん以外は誰もやってないけれども、ユーシンさんはもう、あの、薬石前から着物を着替えて、芸者さんみたいな格好でここに歩き回るけれども、あの、台所で手伝った時は、まあ、袖が引っかかるから、助けをして、ユーシンさんがあそこで手伝うわけですね。これがこの番ですね。えー、あえて自分を束縛し、助けをつけるなぜそれをするかというと袖をめくり上げて働きやすいようにするから天祖の菩提心ということはまず長い長いこの衣の袖をめくり上げて働くことであるインドにはまだ衣はなかったんですけれども中国に入ってから天祖が衣を身ににつけることになったこの衣というのはあの偉い役員さんが着る服だったらしいんですね。その辺の庶民は着ることができない。でもお坊さんは偉いからお客さんの下にこの衣を着る。だから昔から中国で自給自足。お寺は自給自足だったと言われるけれども本当にお坊さんたちがあんな衣で畑仕事をしたか、えー、田んぼをやったのかはまあ疑問ですね私はもしやったとしたらそれこそもう衣を脱いで助けをして働かないといけないで多くのお坊さんはもう昔からそれをしなかったと私は思うだからこそ道元禅師は万を持って菩提心となすという必要があったんですね。菩提心があるならば、まず働きなさいということですね。道元禅師ご自身はそう言うけれども、本人は天造やったことがあるかどうかというとそれもわからない。えーなぜそう思うかというと、天造教訓の中には自分が天造をした話は出てこないんですね。ところが、若い頃に中国に渡って、実際に天造で頑張ってた人に会った話、有名な話は2つ出てくるんですね。1つはまだあの船の上で、どうもまあ入管管理局みたいなところに引っかかって、道元禅師は何週間も上陸,で上陸できなかったようです。師匠の明禅はすぐに入国できて、もう先にあちらこちら修行に行くんですけれども、道元禅師は船に残って、本当は本人もあちこちに、えー、師匠に、いろんな師匠に会って話聞きたいけれども、それができない。毎日ふ船の上で過ごして。入国許可を待っているわけです
でこの船は日本からいろんな品物を持っていって持っていって、それを買いにある中国の天主がやってきたんですね。まあ、しいたけであったという話、説がありますけれども、ある天主はしいたけを買いに日本の船に来たと。で、この天主を道元禅師は捕まえて、ぜひ話を聞きたい。だから、今夜はご,ちごちそうしてあげるから、この船で泊まって。で私の質問に付き合ってくれと。天蔵はいや私は忙しい。お寺に帰って明日の朝ごはんを用意しないといけない。で、道元禅師はあなたのそのお寺は大きなお寺だろうから他にも朝ごはんの用意ぐらいは誰でもできるんじゃないかと。たくさんアシスタントがそこにいるはずだと。私はせっかく遠い日本から命かけてここまで来たんだからまさか私のこの愚道心よりも明日の朝飯を優先させるそんなつもりはないだろうと言ったらいやあの若い君はまだ修行のいろはも分かってないんだと言って天蔵はその時変えてしまったんですね。えー、修行とは何かとか、えー、そういう問いを、まあ、投げかけたままで天蔵は、まあ、その問いさえ忘れなければ、えー、君はこれから迷うことはないだろうと言って書いてしまった。うん君はまだ現時点では修行もわからないし。えー文字もわからないと。で後で道元禅師はもう一度この天蔵に会って、文字の意味は何だと聞いたら12345という答えが出てきて、真実、修行について聞くと、どこにでも隠れ,る隠れることなく現れているという答えを後で得ているんですね。まあ、とにかくこの天蔵のが中国で最初に出会った禅僧であってすごいインパクトがあったようですねでもう一つの話も有名ですけれども道元禅師はようやく、まあ、上陸できてあちこちに回るんですけれども修行寺を回るんですけれどもある日に暑い夏の日に、えー、もう60を超えた天蔵が、えー、カンカンデリーのところで石,とた石畳の上で何かを干してたこれもキノコだったという説もあれば海藻であったという説も、まあ、いろんな説はあるけれども要するに何かを干したで道元禅師は、えー、近づいてあなたは何歳ですかと聞くと68ですなんでそのお年で自らこんなしんどいことをやっているのかと若いアシスタントにやらせればいいじゃないかと道元禅師が聞くと「他はこれ我にあらず」という、まあ、有名な答えが出てくるんですね。人にやらしたら自分がやったことにならない。これがせっかくの自分の修行なので。人にやらすわけにはいかないだろうと。もちろん他にできる人がいくらでもいるんだけれども、それを人に指したら、じゃ自分は何をするかということ。道元禅師は、じゃあどうしても自分でやるならば、なぜこの一番暑い時にやるのか、もうちょっと涼しい時にやればいいじゃないのと。それに対して天津は今なさずんばまたいずれの時を待たぬ。今やらなければいつやるんだという。今しかないじゃないかということですね。えー、これが、まあえー、天祖教区の中で一番有名なエピソードの一つですね。で道元禅師自身はおそらく一度も天祖をやってないんですけれども、日本に帰ってきて、いかにこの天祖という職が大事であるかただの飯作りではない
みんなが食べるためにはただ飯を作るんじゃなくて料理をすることも修行である。最も大事な修行の一つ。Um, how far did you get, get with the English?、Um, <laughs> Bodaishin? I think that was the end of it.、Um, saving others before yourself.、Mm-hmm. In the Tenzo Kyokun, that is an, yet another definition of body mind.、Um, quite in the beginning, Dogen Zenji says for the Tenzo, well, this is read ban. And it means a tool that maybe you saw、uh, Yushin san use it when he was helping with his kimono in the kitchen. He's using the so called tusky、uh, kind of string that you use to roll your sleeves up.、Um, if you are wearing your monk's robe, it's very hard to work in the kitchen because、um, the sleeves get trapped by stuff or they get dirty. Um, in India, the monks didn't wear these black robes yet, but that、uh, became the monks' outfit when Buddhism was transmitted from India to China. And it's basically what high officials wore at the time in、uh, China. So monks were also considered to be of high standing. They were different from peasants who would plow the fields or normal workers who would do work in the kitchen.、Um, so, Dogen Zenji first emphasizes for the Tenzo, forget about your status,、uh, roll up your sleeves and work. That's an expression of body mind. Get to work, get moving. And although he says that it's doubtful. If Dogen Zenji himself ever cooked in the kitchen.、Um, if you read the Tenzo Kyokun, you get the impression that probably he did not, because he's not talking about his own experiences in the kitchen. But he tells us about、uh, encounters with cooks that he had in China. The first was when he was still on the ship and he had difficulties to enter China. His teacher had already permission to、uh, enter the country and he was visiting monasteries. and The student Dogen、uh, stayed behind alone on the ship for several weeks, I think. And on the ship from、uh, Japan, they had several goods、uh, that they wanted to import to China. And, and one day, a cook, a Tenzo, came from an adjacent monastery to buy some dried shiitake, I think it was. And they sold those shiitake to the Cook, and because it was the first Zen monk that Dogen met, he asked him many questions about、uh, the meaning of the scriptures and the meaning of practice. And he asked the Tenzo if he could stay overnight on the ship and he would treat him to a meal so that finally Dogen Zenji could ask him all these questions and the cook would ask, answer him. Um, and the cook says, Sorry, but I have more important things to do than that. I have to prepare more tomorrow's breakfast、uh, in the monastery. And、uh, Dogen says, You can't be serious. I've come all these hundreds of miles and I risked my life. And you say, Breakfast, tomorrow's breakfast is more important than my questions.、Uh, I want to know about the Buddhist teachings, I want to know about practice. And the cook says, Well,、uh, my young friend, Obviously, you still don't know what scriptures are, you don't know what practice is, and he's leaving. And sometime later, months later, years later, Dogen Zenji again meets the cook and asks him once more, what, what are the scriptures? And the cook says, one, two, three, four, five.、Uh, what is practice? And the cook says, nowhere in the universe it's hidden. So basically, practice is manifest everywhere. That's the first story or the first、uh, cook that Dogen meets in China. And later, there's a second encounter that's maybe even more famous.、Uh, on a hot summer day around noon, he sees an old monk drying. It might have been again some kind of mushrooms or it could have been seaweeds on the stone pavement in front of the hall. And Dogen Zenji asks him, How old are you? And the monk says, 
Dogen at the time he's 24, 25 or something. So uh, he could have volunteered to do the job instead of the uh, cook. But he's saying, well, why don't you get some guy from the kitchen, some young guy from the kitchen to do that job for you? And the tensor says, others are not me. So probably there would have been lots of others who, had, who could have done the job. But if I don't practice Somebody else can't do it for me. It's just like going to the toilet. You need to go to the toilet. Of course, somebody else could go for you, but that, that doesn't solve your problem. Uh, if you are hungry, somebody else can eat the ice cream for you, but uh, that won't make you happy either. Even though we're all connected, we're all one in theory. Uh, if I take a pee for you, you're still in trouble. So that's basically the point of the tensor. Uh, of course, somebody else could do this job for me, but then I'm not doing it. So Dogen Zenji says, okay, that's fine. If you insist on doing it yourself, why don't you do it at some other time when the sun has gone down? Why do it, you do it now at noontime when it's the hottest? And the uh, cook famously says, uh, if I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? There's only now. Uh, you're telling me to do it some other time. There's no other time than now. Um, these two encounters are very famous and although probably Dogen himself never had the opportunity to cook when he got back to Japan and later founded Eheji, he wrote the Tenzo Kyokun where he emphasizes um, how important the work of the Tenzo is and that it's expressed in actually rolling up your sleeves and getting to work. So it's not body mind, it's not some kind of uh, theory. It's also not just some wish that mm, I love all living beings, may they all be happy. Uh, but you put that into action in the kitchen by cooking. And then uh, at the end of the <laughs> Tenzo Kyokun, he exemplifies body mind uh, by three minds. In Japanese, they are called Sanshin. Uh, three minds, uh, which are in Japanese. Tenzo Kyoko no Saigo ni wa Bodaishi no ma Gutaide Tiyuka Wakariasui Ikai Toshtewa Kishin Roshin Daishin Tiyu Sanshin no Hanashi ga tekitimasu. Um, in Japanese, it's ki shin, ro shin, dai shin, uh, the mind of joy, joyful mind, old mind, literally old mind and big mind, these three minds. Uh, ki shin wa yorokobu kokoro, yorokobi no kokoro, nani o yorokobu ka? Uh, soko de dogen zenji wa kekko omoshiroi koto yu in desu ne. Tengoku janakte yokatta to yorokobi nasai. Tengoku ni umare nakte yokatta. Ma bukkyo ni wa mukashi kara rinne tensho no anashi ga dete kimasu. Toku ni ma chugoku wa dou ka wakaranai desu kuro indo de wa fukaku shinji rarete ta you desu. Dogen zenji wa wakaranai desu ne. Ano日が燃えてしまうと灰になる。この灰が再び薪に、薪にならない。薪にならないという言葉があって、同じように人が死ねば再び戻らないという言葉があるんですけれども、逆にこの輪廻転生を切磋琢っている特論もあるんですね。で、
あるいつもお腹空いてるお腹空いてるもう目の前にはおいしいものがあっても食えない、えー、で動物は自分の、まあ、食欲性欲睡眠欲の奴隷で満たされると寝てしまう食ったら寝る食っちゃ寝というのは動物の世界ですその上にアシュラいつもカンカンと怒っているアシュラたちがいるわけですね。まあ、あの地獄、ガキ、動物、畜生ですね。畜生、アシュラといっても結局私たち人間の話だと思うんですね。ふっと気がつくと気がつくと人間なんだけれども気がつかないと欲望の奴隷になったり。アシュラのように怒ったり、えー、地獄を味わったりするわけです。でふっと我に考えるときは人間ですね。これは六度輪廻で言えば五番目ですね。地獄、ガキ、畜生、アシュラの上に人間がいるわけです。で人間はいろいろと考えている。でも結局わからない。なぜ生まれたのもわからないし、死んでどうなるのもわからないし、生きる意味もわからないし、でもなんとなく物足りない、いつも苦しい思いを持っている。地獄ほどではないけれども、物足りない、物足りない、悟りたいという思いもこの物足りない、証言の一つ。でその上に天国があるわけです。天上界。天上界では毎日毎日温泉旅行みたいなもんですね。いつもちょうどいいお湯に浸かっててうまい酒が出て温泉から出たら温泉芸者が踊っているそういう世界ですね。でそれが何百年も何千年も続くらしいですね。道元禅師は天祖お前が天国に生まれなくてよかったと。喜びなさい。なぜならば、今天国におったら、仏教を学ぶ機会はない。そもそも、発母大師できない。なぜかというと、自分の苦しみに気づかない。自分のあり方、疑問がない。天国では毎日毎日楽しいんだけれども、修行,するかと修行することなく100年も1000年も過ぎてしまうとキリスト教と違って仏教の考え方では天上界も終わりがあるんですね天国にも終わりがあるんですねで死んだらどこに落ちるかわからないだって修行してもないし自分の生き方を一度も考えたことがないそれができるのは人間として生まれたからこそお前は今、台所に行って苦しい思いをしているかもしれないけれども、よかったじゃないか。現に人間であるし、宗教道場の中に行って、天蔵という実践で仏の道が歩める。素晴らしいことではないかと。で、老心はまあ老いた心なんだけれども、親のような心だと道元禅師が言うわけです。親が自分の子供のために料理しているような気持ちで料理をしなさい。うーん、他の人のことは分からないけれども、私があんたちに来て初めて転造させてもらった時は、喜びもあまり感じることはなかったし、まあ、いつも、不満があったんですねどういうわけか自分が天蔵に当たっている時はいつも外が天気が良くてちょうどいい自分もやりたいようなサムが行われるで天蔵当番が終わると雨が降ってあの明日のあの田植えのようなしんどいサムばっかりが待っているどうも自分がいつも負けくじを引いているわけですねえー、今日みたいないい天気の日、ましてや放さんという休みの日に自分が転造しなくちゃいけないときは、なんで俺がここで一人であいつらのために飯を作らなくちゃいけないのと。くそーと。そんな思いでやっているわけですね
とか接心の時も私はもう座禅が好きで安泰してきたわけですからもうみんな今座禅しているのに私だけは座禅ができないでどうせあいつら居眠りでもこいでるんだろう<笑>あどうせ飯が出るまで居眠りでもこいでるんだろうくそうとで老心というのはそこを捨てることそこを手放すことですねそういう気持ちが出るのは相手を自分のライバルだと思ったり自分と比較して誰が損して誰が得している自分が天祖の時は自分は損しているつもりになっているし今度タオイの時はまた自分は損しているつもり今度は天祖がいいなと私も今日というような日は天祖やりたいのに今日に限っては天祖じゃないんだといつも自分と相手を比較して誰が得した誰が損したというそれがお母さんと赤ちゃんであればそんな比較はしないと思う夜中に赤ちゃんが泣いててもまあたまにはお母さんですらうるさいと思うかもしれないけれども一応無条件に父を与える何かを返してほしいという思いはそこにないそういうまあなかなか無理ここはもうみんな赤ちゃんじゃないんだから相手を自分の赤ちゃんだとなかなか思えないけれども比較をやめましょうというのはこの老子のポイントですね損得の問題じゃないんだとで大臣というのは山のように高く海のように広い心すべてを受け入れる心山はなぜ高いかというとどんな汚いゴミが飛んできてもどうぞ私の上に乗っかかりなさい海はなぜ広いかというとどんな汚れた川が流れてきても私はきれいな川だけを受け入れますと言わずにどうぞみんな流れてきなさいというだからこそ海になるわけですそういう、まあ、3つの心結局一つ同じ菩提心の表れですけれどもこれがないと天祖が務まらないそれでまあ天祖教訓が結ばれているんですね In the end of the Tenzo Kyokun,、uh, these three minds, Kishin, Roshin, Daishin, joyful minds, old mind, but usually it's explained as parental mind and big mind, appear. About joyful mind,、um, Dogen Zenji says, you should be happy about not being in heaven right now. Luckily, lucky for you, good for you that you weren't born in heaven. According to Buddhism, there's six realms in which we can be born. The lowest is hell, the highest is hell, is, is heaven. But、uh, different from Christianity, these are not eternal. So you can be born in hell and be there for several thousand years, but then eventually <laughs> your life in hell will end and you're reborn. The next one would be the hungry ghosts. Those are always hungry. But their throat is so thin that they can't eat. So even if there's delicious food in front of them, it doesn't pass their throat. That's the gaki or hungry ghosts. Animals would be the third one from the bottom. Those are basically slaves of their desire. When they are hungry, they eat,、uh, then they have sex, and then they sleep. And that's basically how their whole lives work. And then there's the Ashura, the, the fighting demons that are always angry and, and struggling with each other.、Um, so basically, I think these are all expressions for the human realm. That's actually what we do with our lives a lot. We're looking for stuff that we can't get, but if I don't, can't get it, <clears throat> I might as well die. But you can't get it. You always want what you can't get.、Uh, you're a slave of the, your desire and. You keep clashing with people, getting angry at them or getting angry at yourself. The human realm is basically when you wake up that for, for, for a moment and you return to yourself and ask yourself, well, what am I actually doing with my life? And you don't know. Nobody knows. You don't know why you're born. You don't know what happens when you die. You don't know the meaning of life. You don't know who you are. 
uh, you don't know what you want in life. Uh, you're always frustrated. Uh, you're not never completely satisfied. That's what defines us humans. We're never really happy. And then the sixth realm at the top, that would be heaven. And being in heaven would be like uh, living in a Japanese onsen all your life. So you're always having this nice hot bath and you're served sake, nice sake, and there's geishas dancing at night for you. Um, all of your wishes come true. All of the time, uh, the whole day. And this continues for hundreds of, hundred of years, maybe thousands of years. And Dogen Zenji says, good for you that you weren't born in heaven, because there would have been no opportunity for you to encounter Buddhism. You would never ask yourself how you want to live your life. You would never ask yourself who you are. And when your life in heaven would have ended, who knows where you would have dropped. Good for you that you're a human being. And good for you that you're the Tenzo in a monastery because now you can practice the Dharma. Uh, now you can engage with these questions. So that's kind of joyful mind. Being happy about the fact that we're not in heaven. Uh, Loshin old mind is explained as parental mind by Dogen Zenji. Cook for others as if they were your baby. I don't know how it's is with others but i remember when i was first in the kitchen in, in antaji i was really not so happy about the fact that i'm there in the kitchen and for some reason whenever i had the kitchen job for five days it was nice weather and it was kind of Samu that I also wanted to do and I was admiring the guys who could be outside while I had to be in the kitchen and cook. Um, and then whenever I would go got, get out of the kitchen, miraculously it was raining and we were planting rice and stuff like that. I, had, I was always kind of on the losing side. If I was in the kitchen, I didn't want to be in the kitchen. And if I had to work do regular summer, I didn't want to do regular summer. I would rather prefer to be the Tenzo. Um, and also when I was Tenzo during Seshin, if I was not Tenzo during Seshin, then I would be in pain. And I would admire the Tenzo for being able to stretch his leg a couple of hours in the kitchen. But if I was the Tenzo, then I would tell myself, well, actually, I came to Antaji to do the Zen. I didn't come here to cook. And all these other guys probably right now, they're on their cushion and sleeping anyway. Uh, <laughs> until I strike the wooden clevers and then they come to eat my food. Why do I have to cook for these lazy monks that uh, <laughs> sleep there on the cushion? <coughs> So that's an expression of not having either joyful mind or parental mind. Like if you have a baby and the baby is crying in the middle of the night, it sometimes happens that, yes, you get fed up by the continual crying and you say, well, could you please give me some sleep? But most of the time you're pretty okay with your baby crying and you give them their milk and you don't ask for anything back. You don't ask the baby, can you please also do something for me sometime? Because it's your baby. And in Antaiji, we emphasize the point that we are not babies here. You're all adults and you have to wipe your own ass. But when you are the Tenzo, you also sometimes need to take this perspective. Well, actually, Dogen Zenji encouraged me to think of the others as if they were my baby. I'm the mother. And it's much easier if you stop comparing <coughs> yourself and always thinking you're the loser. Um, when you're the tensor, you're thinking you're losing. When you're not the tensor, you're thinking you're the loser. When you're in the rice boat, you're thinking you're the loser. When you're the hataki, you also don't like that. Uh, you're chopping wood. Oh, then you hate chopping wood. Um, yeah, Dogen Zenji would say we happy you should be happy that you're not in heaven now 
exactly in the right spot right now. And big mind is the mind of a mountain or the ocean, Dogen Zenji says. The mountain wouldn't be so big if it would reject all the dust that's coming, com, com, that's coming flying this way. The mountain would say, no, please, uh, no dirt here, no dust here. Well, it wouldn't be a mountain. It consists basically of dirt. It's a mass of dirt that has piled up over the centuries. Uh, the same with the ocean. If the ocean would say, I only need the clean rivers, the dirty rivers can stay away. It wouldn't have become the ocean. The, uh, the ocean accepts all of the rivers. So that's the final big mind. And all of these three minds, joyful mind, parental mind, are expression of uh, body mind. Uh, the body mind that the cook needs. Yeah, apart from that, there's lots of other stuff in the Tenzo Kyoku, and you can find it on the internet if you look for it. Uh, of course, it's also available in book form. Um, Dogen Zenji tells you to also, well, put away stuff carefully, stuff that belongs in a high place goes in a high place, stuff that belongs in a low place goes in the low mm -hmm. place. Uh, be careful with the calculations uh, that you don't have too much leftovers, but also there shouldn't be people that go without eating. So also, it's not only theory, but also some stuff is quite to the point. But today, I want to finish here. え、その日の if you have questions about either my talk about the retreat or about Buddhism or about Antaiji, anything, uh, please feel welcome to ask. Hi, Dozo, please. Mm, I have one question about. Others yes. first, and I was wondering how you can help others without losing, without being attached to your own ego as well. It's a difficult thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I tried to say a little thing about that when I said in Buddhism, usually we say self and others are one. So the moment you separate them, it seems that, well, to help others, there seems there needs to be me here. Otherwise, I can't help others. Um, but if you think it about the other way around, you say everyone is connected, so there's no me and there are no others that I could help. But often that turns into an excuse to do nothing. Um, while what seemingly seems to be discriminated thinking to say I help the others first I think that's actually what gets you beyond the ego attachment if you're really seriously attached to your ego you wouldn't think about helping others or maybe you help others but only to prove that you're a good person I mean there's a problem with that attitude um, I help others so that they know I'm a good person and they thank me and they think good of me and I don't think that's what Dogen Zenji means here though um, I mean he explicitly says that well it's a quite long chapter but he says well 
uh, don't hope that helping others will eventually also be, make you a Buddha. Right. Uh, so even if you never reach Buddhahood, still help others, mm -hmm. still help others. Um, so I think he's pretty serious about letting go of the ego. It's just that, just saying, oh, we're all one, we're all one. So there's no need actually to help anybody. Or whenever I help myself, I'm helping the others at the same time because we're all one. Um, the temptation, I think, is to use that as an excuse to just do whatever pleases your ego. By making that distinction and creating the others, which are actually just an imagination, but the moment you forget about yourself, and help the others, not because you expect something bad, but only for that. Then you realize, oh, actually, that wish in itself was the thing. Was the thing that I was looking for all the time, that Satori thing. Hi, please. It seems like whenever Dogen is trying to approach a realization, mm -hmm. it's always in the form of paradoxes. Mm -hmm. Like for example, search for something mm -hmm. which you already have. Mm -hmm. But in our daily experience, if we have something we don't search for it, mm. or we search for something which we don't have. Mm. In the second example, um, in which you have to help other people before you. Once it seems like once you realize that there won't be any uh, point in looking for another realization of that. So is there any other way to look at paradoxes, like not in a daily life sort of way, for entertainment? Because it seems like... Uh, is there any other way to look at paradoxes? Because in, for example, in Scandinavian mythology, whenever the hero goes to search something, mm. it's told like, go east of the moon and west of the sun. Or in Russian fairy tales, it's mm. told like, go there, I don't know where. Mm -hmm. Do that, I don't know what. Mm -hmm. or mm. yes another paradox like the Dutch mm -hmm. graphic designer E. Mm -hmm. C. Escher mm -hmm. his paintings are kind of paradoxical mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it seems like it's always for enjoyment is there a way to approach paradoxes what was this yeah. one with the east of the moon the west of the sun or the other way yeah. around yeah um, it's a Scandinavian mythology yeah it, it's uh, I find that pretty nice because, I mean, a straightforward thing to say would, it's already here now, just be here now, just be the person you are. But by saying, look for it east of the moon and west of the sun or the other way around, uh, what was the other one, the Russian one? Uh, to go there, I don't know where, do mm. that, I don't know what. So when the hero has to go and do that. Or... Mm -hmm. You could also say, well, don't go anywhere. Just stay where you are. Don't do anything. Um, but that becomes then an understanding. Kind of you, you, you think, oh, just like with the fire boy searching for fire. And the, the boy think, um, and the student who hears that, oh, I'm the fire god. I don't have to look for fire anymore. Oh, it's already here now. Why should I go anywhere? So... You need to keep going, but there's no end to the way. There's no even there, there isn't even a fixed direction. So so I think that's in this case east of the moon, west of the sun. There's no east of the moon, west of the sun. So uh, wherever you go, it's there. It's just that you keep moving. So it's not that you sit there and, and lie on the couch and say, well, <laughs> enlightenment is already here now. I just stay in the moment and chill in the moment. And that's what actually some people do. 
Um, so that's kind of the meaning I would take out of that paradox. Um, with saving others, uh, you, you ask this question, what realization, what would uh, one well, look for? We realize for? it sort of once we realize it, okay, mm. I don't need to be awakened mm. or I don't have to have mm. realization to mm. help others. Mm. And that will make me realize or have some, that will make me enlightened. But once I have this realization, mm. then we come back to the first paradox. Why should I keep searching for it? Didn't I just already understood that? So is it kind of constantly renewing that understanding of I need to help others? But uh, I mean, it's not about intel like helping others is not an intellectual understanding. Um, like at the end of this talk, we will uh, chant the four vows, which start Shuzo uh, Muhen Segando. Uh, living beings cannot be counted, but I vow to all them to save them all. You can't do that. It's impossible to do that, but you vow to do it, and there's no end to that. And uh, it's not an international. Uh, it's not an intellectual understanding that it's enough to just have that wish. But when you have the wish. You go east of the moon and west of the sun. So, so you have to go there. And you can't go there. You can't go there, but you need to keep going. And with uh, sentient beings, I mean, it's, it's hard enough to even help one person here at Antaishi. How can you ever save all living beings? It's impossible. It's impossible, but at least you, you try your best to do it. And if you should ever succeed to save one person, okay, let's try to save another person. But probably there will never going to be a day where I can sit back and say, oh, finally I've done it. i finally done it. There's no end. So basically mm. constantly brooding over it or thinking over the No, doing, go, doing it basically. You're which doing will it. harden your determination to do it? Or Pardon? Uh, which will kind of make your determination stronger to do it. Because... As I pointed at the usual mm. paradoxes in data life, you just read it and, oh, yeah, it's a fun story and mm -hmm. just move to the next thing. Mm -hmm. But it seems like at those paradoxes that Dogen is pointing, we should somehow stay with it a little bit longer. You can stay with it as long as you like, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please. Can I ask you two questions? Yes. When you said that you were not the person you were like, like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, what is mm. it like now? Can I just ask you a question? When you were 20 years old, when you were 30 years old, when you were 40 years old, and now you're 50 years old, what was your motivation when you were 20, 30, 40, and 50? And the second question is, what characteristics you got? value the most in other people? Hmm. What characteristics do I value most in other people? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I never really think about it so so deeply. Like uh, two years ago, we had uh, this guy who was into personality types and which which would be best for Antaiji and, and uh, he would kind of type, find out which type I was and which types were best for me and which types were not so good. But I'm not really so deep into that. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Probably there's certain character traits which I, it's easier for me to match with and others which is more difficult but i don't know at least not consciously i'm I, I could tell you well this is kind of what i desire that character trait or personality what i desire in a person um 20 30 40 50 year old me motivation at 20, I was still studying in Berlin, but I was uh, going to the Zen Dojo there every day, and I had my mind set on going to Japan eventually, and I was studying Japanese at the university to prepare myself. 
Um, I didn't know about Antaiji yet, but I was help, hoping to find a monastery where I can practice 24 hours a day and maybe find an enlightened teacher and maybe become enlightened myself, hopefully, as soon as possible. And at 30, I had been at Antaiji for five or six years already. Mm. Probably I was already the head monk at the time, uh, maybe the second or I was probably close to being the, uh, at 31 I was the head monk, but I was the second uh, longest at the time in Antaiji and um, I wasn't ready yet I think completely to stand on my own feet, but I was kind of growing into that. It, 33 I left uh, Antaiji, so I was kind of growing, getting prepared for standing on my own feet and trying to give what I learned in Antaiji to others. Uh, I didn't know yet, of course I had no idea that I eventually I would become, become the abbot of that place. I thought that at one time I would go back to Germany and establish maybe my own small Zen dojo. But then when I actually left Antaiji at age 33, I decided uh, first I want to start a dojo in Japan because there's many temples. There's 15,000 temples in this country, but there's not the Western style dojo where you normal people go in the city and they go before work or they go after work or on the weekends. Uh, I wanted to establish a dojo in Osaka for ordinary people and as I had no money to rent a place I became a homeless for six months and I enjoyed that life but then my teacher died and I was eventually called back to become the abbot uh, which I didn't know when I was 30 but um, at 30 yeah my practice wasn't finished but I was kind of getting the direction oh this is one of what I, what I want to do for the rest of my life and I want to share this practice eventually with others so I'm gonna stay for another couple of years in Antaj until my teacher tells me okay uh, this is it and then I'm gonna go my own way and uh, at age 40 I was back here now as the abbot uh, 10 years ago, 2008, mm. so when did Echo-san come? Echo-san wasn't here, nobody of you were here at the time, so everybody <coughs> has changed. It was a kind of difficult time for me, I'd become the abbot and seven years had passed already. Mm. Among my three kids, the oldest two were still kindergarten age. Um, it was difficult because um, there were always a number of people passing through Antaiji. Sometimes, often in the winter, it was only me and another person, or maybe me and two or three person. But then in the summer, sometimes it was 15 people. But then in the autumn, when it gets colder, people were leaving again. And few people stayed more than six months. Some stayed for a year, but usually in May, when we do the rice planting, I was the only one who knew how to do it. So, so basically, I have to explain everything. And every spring, I have to teach the Tenzo stuff. I have to teach the Jikido. Basically, I'm kind of echo san for for everything i'm i'm i'm, I'm echo san uh, all over the place and everybody else is, is just short term which was hard also with the two two kids uh, and, and my wife needing help so at 40 i was pretty desperate um but also i didn't want to close down the place and um at one time, I actually I took a sabbatical. It was around that time when I took half a year off um, and didn't accept any newcomers during that year. 
and that's when I wrote my first book in German also. Mm, so my first book came out in German, which created a certain interest also in Germany. Um, and after that sabbatical, after I opened the gates again, people came and I gradually changed the rules to what we have now. You can come, but please also prepare yourself. I can't run this place alone. I need people who stay. So you should think about the three year stay. And if you want to stay three years, you need to know the language. So please learn the language beforehand. Um, my first student that ordained with me was 70, but then I realized that it's really hard to, to, to do this kind of life if you're too old. So said preferably you're between 80 and 40. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be difficult to stay here for three years. It's also going to be difficult to study Japanese if you don't know it already was kind of desperate thing that I started when I was 40. Uh, but then it somehow it worked. And uh, after that, I also got offers to write books in Japanese, which generated also more interest in Japan. Before it was more Gaijin temple, almost only foreigners that came here. And now it's kind of half, half, more half or half like, and that's happened because of these Japanese books. Um, so now at age 50, um, I'm happy to be here with all of you and I hope I can still be here for some time. But also now my motivation or my goal is to find somebody who's going to do this job after me. So that would for me be now the most important thing. Um, of course, I mean, everything is impermanent, also Antaiji. So there's going to be a time in the history where there's no Antaiji anymore. But if possible, I would have this place, place continue for another 50 years, 100 years, maybe even 500 years. Uh, so for that, I have to find a successor. Um, and of course, like during this retreat, if lots of other people come here, uh, even if it's only short term. Um, that's also nice. And uh, I hope that people use this opportunity to come here, even if it's only for five days and take something out of that um, and learn maybe something from that. But if you ask me, what's your motivation now at age 50 right now, I hope to hmm, find a successor who's maybe doing this job when I'm 60. And it's what I'm going to do when I'm 60, I have no idea. Might be that I'm still sitting here. Um, but maybe I'm going to be somewhere else doing something else. Maybe it's possible. So yeah, that was a long answer to your first question. The second question, I couldn't do so much with it. <laughs> と、はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい
お前にとって菩提心とは何かと聞かれたらやはりまあこの後唱える主生無変聖願度というまあ地味徳度先祖たに限りなく近いですけれども今の私に何ができるだろうかという。今この安泰寺において今日明日何ができるかというそういうことじゃないかと思うんですね。はい<笑>、はい、すみません。はい、そうですか出てきません。はい、ピース。Yes. And Logan, Logan, he he asked the Tenzo about the scripture, the meaning of the scripture. Yes. The Tenzo answered one, two, three, four, five. Yes. What is the meaning of the one, two, three, four, five? Well, I mean, probably that the point of this is don't think about the meaning. Like, for example, if you're working in the kitchen and you calculate how much. Rice you need. I mean, that's that's how you work with、um, letters or words. One, two, three, four, five. How many people are there here right now?、Uh, right now it's thirty. Until the, in the morning was thirty-one.、Uh, how much rice do we need for that?、Um, when is the next hosan? When is going to be the next session? So. What's the meaning of the scriptures? Basically, it's it needs to be related to your everyday life. There's no meaning to the scriptures if it doesn't relate to what we eat, what we have on the table, if it doesn't、uh, relate to the schedule, if it doesn't、uh, relate to everyday thing, everyday things like that.、Um, actually, that's pretty close to. What、uh, philosophers found out in the last century, century when there, there was this kind of so-called turn, a linguistic turn in philosophy, where people realized that actually we don't really know what language is and what the meaning of words is. People used to think that the meaning of the word is something that you have in your head, and the word is a tool that you use to. Um, get that out of your head and get it into the head of the other person. So, it would be best if we could communicate directly, mind to mind. But we can't do that, so we have to use these tools. So first, there's a thought in my head or an emotion or something I want to express. So I get this tool that I get from somewhere and I use it. And, but then the, for example, Wittgenstein said, "Well, how do you learn language?" How do you learn language? Actually, it's by counting one, two, three, four, five. So that comes first. First comes this this life experience one, two, three, four, five, or kind of somebody points at the color and you say red.、Um, and only after that you understand. So first comes life. First comes.、Um, The action, for example, of counting, and what numbers are is something that you un- understand later. It's not that you have numbers in your head and then you need you learn what one, two, three, or four, five is, and then finally, oh, finally, I got the tool to communicate these numbers. But actually,、uh, there's the practice of life day to day, and that's where. The scriptures should be rooted. It's just unfortunately when we talk about the Lotus Sutra or the Kegon Sutra or the Shobogen, so most of the time it's not related to life, and that's the good thing of the Tenzo Kyokun. Actually, they Dogen Zenji is talking about、uh, calculations of rice cooking stuff like that. And if you study it during the winter, there's lots of things there you can apply to your daily practice. So I think that's what he means with one, two, three, four, five. I mean, you know what letters it is. There are words in your head now. Use them. Use them in your daily life. That's where they come from.、Uh, that's what they should be applied to.、Mm-hmm. And the second question is the, the Tenzo.、Um, Tenzo、uh, is a cook.、Mm. 
But the letters are like this, this, this seating. Uh, I just wanted to know if you know where this comes from. Yeah, za is kind of, or so it's written written in this way, but you, the seat. Mm -hmm. What is more kind of confusing for me is the first one. I mean, why do we use this one? Because this one usually means scriptures. Is that right? Kind of butte no tendu nano So even the Japanese don't really know that. Well, this this is kind of, as you said, the seat, but it can be all kind of uh, the location of something. Like, for example, in Tokyo, the Ginza, that's where the people that work with silver are located. Or it's kind of their, how do you say, their pun? Like, like, uh, Headquarters like like a guild, guild, um, kind of a, like a community, community or kind of um, to you, guild or neighborhood, uh, neighborhood or, or there's also the the kabuki za where the kabuki takes place in in, in Osaka. You got the kabuki za, something where something takes place can can be za. It can be a seat, but it can be more like this and. What this means is kind of the, the real mystery to me. Like, like uh, I don't know, the, the Japanese that I just asked didn't know exactly. Somebody said sonai mono, which could be offering, kind of the place where the offering takes place, which would make sense, but I'm not quite sure if that's the original meaning. Yes, please. Um, like, as a tenzo, um, do you, like, when we think about uh, what we said, uh, what Dogen said, that we should uh, care about um, uh, the people we serve as our babies or as our child. Yes. Um, when, like, examples for Antaji, like, um, would you think it would be better if we, uh, I would like to... Like on one point, like we want to let our child get it, uh, adults and give them like a teaching how they can uh, can get adults, um, which is sometimes a little bit hard probably for them because mm. they're like child. Mm. But on the other hand, um, they also should have like a happy living in this moment. Yes, a happy so, um, in the moment. Mm -hmm. Like they, they should be like, like I think as a tenzo, you have a big responsibility in this. Yes. Or you could be, and um, what you like? How? Like I have an example. Um, there was a time when we like after the meals uh, we had often the leftovers. Mm -hmm. and this was probably like um, like a lot of people like what we had this discussion with that took my years, and it was like a kind of second mm -hmm. second uh, meal what they had. Mm -hmm. I'm still not really thinking that this was all just a, just a ceremony we done here, mm. but I 100% get the point of um, that this is more important, we should eat together, this is also like mm. an adult thing. Mm. Um, but for example, like we had this time, um, what I see right now, after session, when we, like this was, a, like it's really hard and intense, and this second eating we often had, mm. this create like a, a very, like everybody had to first talk together, after the chanting mm. and still had the second bowl of uh, mm. curry. Mm. But it's like, then you would break the rule a little bit with. Mm. And you maybe let them a little bit more free mm. time, you don't give them a hard teaching. Mm. Um, or not a hard teaching, but maybe you open a little bit the space. Mm. Would you think this is a good, like a tenso should think about these moments too and maybe make a little space open? Or just, this is just an example, maybe you put could find more, but also this little open the space is also important, or it's just trying of, to of course it's important. It's uh, just that um, yeah, you make sure should make sure that you open one spot and then it's 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 all of this opens, which can yeah, can, get, can happen. Um, so often it's easier to then for for example. 
discuss it and say like um, yeah we see the point in not having leftovers but how about after session and and three o'clock is quite early if, if people want to eat until six or so why not make an exemption on session day last day of session um, rather than always have people opening their individual holes whenever they think appropriate but everybody has completely different ideas of the, the size of the hole and, and especially when it's then happening behind other people's back because they have this person thinks there should be never any hole anywhere but, but this person thinks oh and then you keep it a secret and then there's only this amount of friends that are allowed yeah. through the hole and so on and so on but in general yes of course I mean as you said, um, if people, if you're the tenter, you want them to be happy and, and uh, have a good meal. And in the case of session, there's only two meals and the session is over at three. So yeah, people like to enjoy until talk until in the evening and there's still curry over, left over, why not? Yeah, just one example, mm. like I mm. probably like, I don't know, but sometimes you have the feeling, okay, now I see the people working outside, I would love to bring them some cookies, but maybe it's too much. And like, I think to find the balance between mm. just these meals, but also you can maybe sometimes when you find the right moment to do something more or just like let them on the limit. That's, I think you answered this question. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, tomorrow rice planning is one of the traditional moments where, yeah, the tensor comes there all the way down to the rice with whatever they could think of that makes the people there happy. So. Yeah. <laughs> 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 えっと、最初、ロッカーリスぐらいに、えっと、まあ、1年間のスケジュールが決まっている。今のアンタジュよりもあの休み時間も少なくて夏の休みがないし、あの冬は30時間、30時間しかないだからこの冬の3週間が終わるともう1日1年間はここにいなくちゃいけない。え、
もうずっと死ぬまでやってもかっ,てもかったですね<笑>もうとにかくもう楽しいですはいテントはいテントですねはいじゃあどこかにそこ、えー、違う公園に行きなさいって言われたらテントをそうそう畳んで、うん、移動してはい気楽ですよ、はい<笑><笑>他にありませんか。はい、はいえー、なければこれで終わりたいと思います。長、え、らくお疲れ様でした。Oh, oh.